Hello and welcome to the Scavel channel and today I'd like to show you the new and improved Tron version 2 $400 gaming PC. This time bringing you those same great looks of the original but with better gaming performance for the same price. If you're looking for a custom gaming PC that is easy to build, future-proof, boasts stylish looks for cheap, and offers the most performance possible for $400 using all new parts, then Tron version 2 is for you. Which is why in this PC build guide video, I'll be going over the parts and reasonings for Tron version 2, the best upgrade paths possible for all the parts shown, benchmarks over the expected gaming and streaming performance, my overall pros and cons from using this PC, and coming out next weekend, a full step-by-step -step build tutorial guide on how to build Tron version 2. If you have any potential questions over how to build or customize Tron, then I'd highly suggest joining the Scatterable Discord server where you can talk to our 24-7 tech support or to many other longtime PC gamers for help or suggestions. Before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to the new official Scatterable Instagram page because I got myself a new phone with a really good camera and I'm ready to start posting some content to it. So a link for that will be in the description below. Starting off the build for the processor, I am choosing the new Athlon 200GE dual core quad threaded 3.2 gigahertz processor with integrated Vega 3 graphics for $55. This is AMD's brand new low end chip to combat the similarly priced Intel Pentium lineup. So for those of you who are curious, Let's see which one is faster. To find that out, I took the gaming benchmarks from my Tron video, which used a Pentium G5400, eight gigabytes of RAM, and an overclocked gigabyte GT1030, and took some new benchmarks with the 200GE using eight gigabytes of RAM and a very similar MSI GT1030 overclocked to a 600 megahertz memory clock and a 160 megahertz core clock. Here are the results. The 200GE is slower across the board than the Pentium G5400 when paired with the same specs by about 7 to 10 frames per second, which is unfortunate considering that most Ryzen chips like the 2200G and 2600 can trade with their Intel counterparts if not beat them. But the Athlon 200GE just slumps underneath the G4500. However, a redeeming factor for the 200GE is its $55 price tag considering that the Pentium lineup has been affected by Intel's chip shortages, causing them to inflate well over $100. So despite its poor performance, the Athlon 200GE is the significantly cheaper processor at the moment, which is why it is in Tron version 2. Moving on to the motherboard, I would recommend picking up the $50 Gigabyte A320M S2H motherboard used from my $300 Volt V2 gaming PC. Since the Athlon 200GE is not overclockable and is very low wattage, getting a low-end A320 series motherboard wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to save some money. However, if you like something that is more future-proof that can support faster 6-core or 8-core Ryzen CPUs, like the Ryzen 2700X, then a B350 or B450 series motherboard like the AB350M DS3H shown here in the build may be for you, but it will cost you $15 more. At the moment, from what I can tell, there are no current motherboards that can support the Athlon 200GE right out of the box, so Unfortunately, you will still have to BIOS update these motherboards, which really isn't that much of a hassle as explained in my Volt V2 gaming PC video linked here. Next for the RAM, I have 8GB of Patriot Signature Line RAM running at 2400MHz costing $65. 8GB of RAM is still enough to run most games today as you'll see from the benchmarks, so this budget RAM kit which can go up to 2066MHz without overclocking will do the job. As for the hard drive, I have a $30 500GB Western Digital Blue hard drive. 500 gigabytes of storage will be big enough to hold a good amount of PC games depending on their size, including the Windows operating system. Basic PC games like Fortnite only take up 23.4 gigabytes of storage, but higher end titles like Black Ops 4 will take up 55 gigabytes of storage, so I'd be mindful with what games you install on this hard drive. Moving on to the graphics card, I've chosen the RX 560 graphics card. There are some great reasons why you'd want to choose this card right now for your next 
budget gaming PC, since you can grab one for as low as $135, which is the same average price of a GTX 1050 on Amazon. For $135, you'll be getting a hefty 4GB of VRAM to play around with, which will be valuable for years to come as more and more PC games nowadays are eating up well above the average low of 2GB of VRAM, such as with the GTX 1050. As for performance, the RX 560 will be the future-proof 1080p gaming backbone of Tron V2, which on average will pump over 60 frames per second in the majority of PC titles at various settings. Next up for the case, I have the $40 Cougar MX330 ATX case. I've had many positive experiences with Cougar cases in the past, especially with my $600 Raptor PC build, so I went with their cheapest option this time, which still sports a tempered glass side panel and power supply shroud. And closing out the build for the power supply, I chose the 80 plus bronze Corsair VS400 400 watt power supply priced at 35 bucks. The total for Tron version 2 using up these parts adds up to $409 based off Amazon and one new egg price for the Cougar MX330 case. Yet again, you can check out all these parts for yourself through the provided links in the description. But let's say you had 50 or $100 more to spend for Tron version 2. What PC parts should you upgrade to get the most performance for your money? If you have an extra $50 to spend, I would highly advise you upgrade the Athlon 200GE to a Ryzen 2200G, no question. Setting up yourself with a quad core in the year 2018 is extremely advised and the 2200G for just $45 more than the 200GE can do exactly that. Plus, it's overclockable even on the stock cooler that comes with it, which will allow you to get even more performance than what you're paying for. If you have an extra $100 to spend, still use the $50 to get the 2200G, but use the other $50 to ditch the hard drive in this build and replace it with a high quality SSD like the 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue SSD or 500 gigabyte Crucial MX500. The extra speed and snappiness of Tron version 2 would offer on a day-to-day -day basis would be a huge convenience in the long run, more so, I believe, than using that spare $50 for a faster gaming graphics card. Now onto everyone's favorite section, the benchmarks. This time around, I decided not to overclock the RX 560 since many of you are unfamiliar with GPU overclocking. That way I can provide the most realistic results possible. All recordings are done through a separate Elgato HD60 captured from my Huawei MateBook Pro X, so that way there is no possible hardware bottlenecking for these benchmarks. And yes, there will be streaming benchmarks shown as well, so be sure to watch out for those. Anyways, without further ado, here are the benchmarks. So there you have it, those are the benchmarks, and now let's get into the overall review of Tron version 2. Starting with the pros, the performance of this new revision of Tron over the original has been massively increased thanks to the new super cheap $55 Athlon 200GE processor and $50 A320 motherboard, which allowed us to afford that $135 RX 560 graphics card. I won't compare all the benchmarks from Tron version 1 to Tron version 2, I mean, feel free to do that on your own time, but some notable ones I want to point out are Rainbow Six Siege, which got an average 15 frames per second higher than Tron version 1 
at very high settings versus medium settings running on the original. And PUBG, which got an average 8 frames per second higher than Tron version 1 at medium settings versus low settings running on the original. And as you guys saw, I'd say that it's a solid bet that Tron version 2 can stream but only at 720p. I would not advise streaming your output at 1080p for most PC games, including Fortnite, since the frame rate received at Twitch is choppy. But streaming at 720p at 5,000 kilobits per second at 30 or 60 frames per second, depending on the game, while running the actual game at 1080p from Tron version 2 will do fine. But aside from the better performance and light streaming capabilities, the main con I see are the looks. We can all agree Tron version 1 looks better, or at least more flashy. But if you're more into normal looking computers, then I still think that Tron version 2 and its understated looks will still be appealing. Though in all honesty, if you can pucker up the extra $45 for a quad-core Ryzen 2200G over the dual-core Athlon 200GE, then I certainly would, even if that means waiting an extra month or two to save up money, as quad-cores are a must for 2018 PC gaming in order to have a long-term enjoyable experience. Anyways, that ladies and gentlemen concludes the $400 Tron version 2 gaming PC build guide. If you enjoy PC build videos like this, then consider subscribing to the Scatterbolt YouTube channel since we're all about budget PC tech and gaming. And as always, be sure to like, paper, subscribe and all that, and this is the Scatterbolt channel, signing out.